What's up, family? Welcome to Ask the Mods. Where we challenge you to stop playing and start pushing. This is my insightful wife, Fiona. <laughs> and this is my impressive husband, Ayize. Welcome, y'all. Welcome to Ask the Maats. Who are we? We are the Maats. What do we do? We give you our opinions, we give you our advice, and we always keep it 100% real. Real. All right, y'all. This is what we do. We answer questions from you out there. We had a question come in recently from a gentleman, and here's his question. He says, hello, I want to propose to a woman who resents me because of things that I've done in the past. I've cheated on her multiple times over a four-year span of being in an on-again, off-again relationship because of my cheating, and I'm convinced that this is the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. However, she has trust issues. I know I have to first work on myself, and I'm in the process of doing that now. Do you guys have any suggestions on how I can continue their process? How can I go about earning her trust back? Is it too late after multiple times of cheating? Is proposing a bad idea? I love this woman to the core, and I just want to be the man that I already am and desire to be. This is what has come to us today. So we're just going to attack these questions. You see, he had four questions um, all wrapped up in that. And question number one was this. Um, Let's do the last question first. Oh, the last question? Yeah, what was the last question? Oh, the last question is, is proposing a bad idea? Yes, it's a bad idea. <laughs> it's a bad idea right now because you're really not ready to be in a committed relationship with this mm -hmm. with this young lady. So I would recommend you don't propose right now. Mm -hmm. You need to work on you before you work on trying to get this relationship back intact. So don't propose right now. Right. Right now ain't a good time. Right, yeah. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> All right, the, the next question is, is it too late? After, after multiple times of cheating. Only the people in the relationship can speak to whether it's too late or not. So you really cannot base that on what we tell you. I can tell you that we work with couples who've had uh, folks cheat you know, over and over and over again and they have stuck through it and they have helped each other work through their own individual stuff mm -hmm. and also held each other accountable at the same time. And it's been hell, but they determined for themselves that it was worth going through the hell because they loved each other that much. Mm -hmm. And there are the folks who just decided like, I'm done, I can't deal with this no more, I'm not going to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So that's really a personal thing and you can only get that from your, your um, girlfriend, you know, as to whether or not she's Saying it's too late or not. Mm -hmm. you know? That's true. All right, the third question he has here is, how can he go about earning her trust back? What I would say is just do what it is that she's asking you to do. I mean, ask her what is it that she needs mm -hmm. in order to feel as though she can trust you again in a relationship. You know, you've broken her trust. There's some mistakes that you've made. And um, really, at your, you're at her beck and whim right now. Mm -hmm. You know, she whatever she wants, whether or not she wants you to, you know, stay in the house 24-7. No, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, she might not want you to go out as often as you've gone out. She might want to, you know, check your email, mm -hmm. have your cell phone password. She might want to have all of that stuff just to feel more secure. Now, granted, this can't continue for an extended, extended period of time. But at this point in you all's relationship, that's what she's asking for because she needs that to feel more secure and to know that, you know, you're on the up and up and you're trying to go in the right direction. And do what it is that she's asking for. And I would just, you know, have to differ just a tad bit with my husband. I think that it can go on for an extended, extended period of time. I mean, I have my husband's uh, password to everything. Mm -hmm. He has my passwords to everything. Email, phone, messages, Facebook, mm -hmm. all of that. We don't check it all the time because we're not, you know, yeah. it's just like if I need to go on and do something or find something in his email or vice versa, we do it. But, yeah, you, you, there's no time where you should say, okay, look, I need my own privacy again now. I mean, Yeah, I mean, that's true. I think that you, that can be an extended thing. I think what you're speaking to may be that at some point trust needs to start to enter yeah, back into start, the process. It needs to start being reestablished. But, but we, we talked about this before. Sometimes trust don't enter in for, for three, four, five years. Yeah, it can I take mean, some time. It can. You know, you, you, you made the bed. You must be prepared to lie in it. And, and one of the fallacies, <laughs> too, that people also make is that they think that you know, getting married or getting proposed and getting engaged is like a panacea for whatever past cure or past well, what, ills that you what have. Does, what does panacea mean? I mean, it's a cure all. You know, they think that, a that what? it's a cure all. They think that, mm -hmm. you know, by getting engaged or getting married, that they'll no longer cheat again. 
you know, that their life is going to change dramatically mm -hmm. without doing any work. So, mm -hmm. no, proposing is not a panacea for those problems that you've had mm -hmm. that led you to be unfaithful in a relationship. This brings uh, us to the, the fourth and last question that you asked. You say, do we have any suggestions on what you could do to continue the process of working on yourself? And the first thing is to understand what working on yourself means. And, and my husband said, getting married does not mean, oh, I'm married now, I'm connected. It's a lot of married folks who ain't committed. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of folks who are committed and ain't quite married yet, mm -hmm. you know? So, so again, understand what working on yourself means. It doesn't mean, okay, I'm ready, I hook up, and that means all of a sudden, you know, I'm in a relationship and I'm committed because we're engaged. Mm -hmm. No. What it means is that you really look at yourself. You might want to do some journaling. You know, some, some guys, when I tell them that, they're like, no, journaling? What the heck? But seriously, write down your feelings. And, you know, I don't know how old you are, um, but, you know, I don't know if this is something that's related to the time that you're... Um, the phase of life that you're in right now. You mm -hmm. know, if you're a young guy and, you know, you're just kind of doing your thing and, you know, it's not, there's no excuse, but, but, but I don't know if it's that or if there are some other issues, you know, deeper issues in terms of uh, a fear of commitment, um, a fear of really trusting and being vulnerable. And those are the kinds of things that you have to be willing to ask yourself. You might want to get into counseling. You might want to do some coaching. You might just want to be honest with yourself and, and, and move from that place. When we work with couples, one of the first things that we um, usually have the person who is the cheater um, do is really try to do some exercises in self-awareness. And one of those exercises looks like this. It's called Find Your Trigger. And, and one of the things that you can do is really start to be more self-aware. Tune into what's going on with you. So when you're out and about, um, you know, wherever you are, you know, there's triggers usually that occur when we find ourselves going down a path that we don't need to go down. So when you first have a conversation with the woman who you end up cheating with, when you first, you know, look over at her, you need to stop for a second because those moments are not going to stop. You're not going to go away. They're going to continue to come. And you need to pause for a minute and intentionally say, what is happening right now in my life? Are you in a stressful period with your, your uh, woman, the one you say you love? Um, are, are you, uh, you know, in certain environments? What's going on? So that you can start to identify what are the consistent themes happening with me when I am most vulnerable. When you can figure out your trigger and you can figure out when you're most vulnerable, then you can be more proactive and, and really put some things in place to prevent yourself from being set up. Mm -hmm. That is real work. Yeah. That takes some real get down to it. Mm -hmm. That is not just, I'm telling you, I'm not going to do it no more. Because you can't even depend on yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't even depend on yourself. So I would say, you know, make, make that uh, an exercise that you do to really start to figure out What's my trigger? So marriage is not the answer. Be clear about that. The answer is for you to focus on yourself. And when you can demonstrate for her that you are focusing on yourself, getting the insight that you need, then you'll be a little bit closer to that magical word called marriage. But marriage for you right now, I'm afraid, is not the answer. You ain't ready for that. But the way to get ready, listen in real close, is to stop playing and start pushing. I love you, baby. I'll cherish you, baby.